Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sam here. Today is a calves workout. I know, I know. I could barely contain my excitement as well. But it's a little bit different this time because it's going to be retesting my foot. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you know that I injured my big toe really badly, got mashed up by some iron plates, and it's looking sort of normal now. So I was going to try the calf raises to see how it's going to fit into my future programs. Now, Beside me is the seated calf raise and the standing calf raise. Of course, you'll be well familiar with this sort of thing. I'm hoping today that the exercises that I show, or at least one or two of them, are gonna be new to some of you. So stick with it if you're not really sure what you're doing with calves or wanted to try something new, or even if you don't have access to perhaps a seated or standing, which could be the case. So we're gonna use some other equipment that's not usually used for calves, adapt it in a way that's quite useful for them, and I'll show you that. If calves isn't your thing, I do have some more juicy content coming up in the following days. So subscribe if you're up for something a little bit more controversial, because I've been receiving a lot of questions about stuff like psalms and trem, and I think it's time to kind of tell you what you need to know about these things, because they're actually not super important, and we're going to break that down at length in some standalone videos in the coming days. So. Subscribe for all the content on bodybuilding, including the PED discussions, because a little bit more of that is coming your way. And for now, I'm going to test out that dodgy foot with carbs. So I'm going to start the other side with an exercise I'm hoping some of you haven't seen before, because I think it's one of the best ones. Come with me. We'll take the bro's eye view again as we walk through here at Zone Gym. And as we come down here, we've got what they call horizontal leg press. Here it is just here and you can do this seated for calves and it's particularly good because you get a better pump in your calves because they're not completely against gravity for getting the blood flow in and out of the calves with your your legs sort of horizontal like that so that's what we're going to start with today what you want to do with this thing is put the seat all the way back so you don't have to press forward so much on your legs as you get set up when you're all settled in you're just going to put your feet on the very bottom of the foot press so that just your toes are on it and do calf raises that way so i do a very light warm-up here as i haven't touched the calves since i sustained that nasty little injury you press it out here shuffle your feet down to the bottom slight bend at the knee but not very much and just press with the calves here so this is just my little warm-up and uh Obviously, I'm going to have to abandon this if it doesn't feel right on the toe, which is recovering. But I think I'm about ready. But as my workouts are all live and as well, not live, but they are, you know, warts and all. I don't take out any of the bad sets or things that went wrong and show you things that are actually happening in my journey here, as well as the pure education content. And so that means that if I can't skip up, they go up and we'll have to talk about something else for the day. With the weight this light, I find the toes slip a little bit, so this will be a lot more stable once I get the proper set going. But that is sufficient as a warm-up and things feel okay for now. Right, set one proper. Still feels okay. What I sometimes do when things get more intense on carbs and I want a really challenging session is I'll superset this with body weight standing raises. So, you know, I don't need the machine way back over there. I'll just get the wooden block, just hold on to the frame of this ever so lightly to stabilize myself and do body weight raises as a superset and the second part of the superset after the horizontal leg press calf raises. And that, if you want to feel that pump in your calves, is the most extreme combination that I've found so far. Hit set two, same way again.
That's a three. Now, I've been doing three sets for most, th most things lately, and I'm going to apply that here as well, especially as it's the first time back on the calves and putting pressure through that toe that was injured while I've been kind of deloading it down in my program in general with three sets for most things lately. Same here and careful, I don't overdo it on that toe just coming back, but so far so good. So. I'm going to make it through the workout. I think I'll be able to keep the calves in the routine from here on. Next up is another unusual one. This one here is the donkey calf raise machine. This one by Nitram, which I'm reliably informed is the, the name of the designer backwards. He's called Martin, apparently, who designed the machines of this company. So we've got Nitram and this is the, the donkey calf raise. And not available everywhere, so it's good to make use of it when I am training in zone. In the old days, of course, you just have your gym bros riding you while you do calf raises on a block bent over, but I'm glad we got this because I don't need to get quite so involved with my, with my pals here. And actually, even if I was willing to, and it's a Friday night and most people have got something back to do, there's no one here today anyway. So it means it can be a quicker workout with less waiting around, that's one positive. And set one. I can give you a bit of a clearer view of what's going on with this machine if I show you sideways for this second set. So you get the pad in the right place, just half on your hips, half on your lower back, then get your feet into position on the block, in position, and then it's kind of like a squat, getting into position, then your knees stay, stay as they are, hold the handles tight and raise while leaning forwards. Again, it's just going to be three sets as I'm taking it steady, bringing that toe back into the, the scheme of things. But, you know, if there is strong demand for it, I could do it the old school way one time and have, uh, have some people riding me. But another problem that presents is that most of my friends here are the monsters in the North London bodybuilding scene. So I might have to actually build my calves up a little bit in strength before I'm capable of such feats. But you know, it could be entertaining. And I try to keep a lot of my training quite old school, so it kind of fit the ethos and aesthetic of the channel. Anyway. I'll stop messing around and finish this exercise off. Just one
it's one of the more difficult exercises it's actually I've kind of forgot how it felt relative to the others as it's been this time off the calves letting that toe heel up I'm glad to be back on it I've always kept quite keen on calves and not neglected them so mine are actually okay but probably not okay enough for me to be flexing them on this occasion next angle and next exercise here is doing calf raises on the linear hack squat or i think they call it the linear hack press yeah hammer strength they're calling it the linear hack press and i first saw this exercise modification in a video by lee priest um, who did have amazing calves you just find that your eyes are more drawn in attention towards the forearms and biceps triceps you know just the arms looking outrageous there they did have excellent calves i saw him doing this one in the video and i quite like it too i find that it's really good for the stretch the stretch at the bottom of the movement which is probably the more important portion of the movement feels particularly intense doing it on this and uh, it's not such a rare machine to find around so if you are bored on training calves and you see any kind of hack squat where it's your lower back and your butt pressing into the machine as opposed to it being shoulder carriage then this is one that's worth giving a go and it's it's the same sort of tactic as we applied in the horizontal leg press calf raises where you just can do the exercise by shuffling your toes towards the bottom of the platform straining your legs and then pressing lightweight with your calves so there we go with all of these calves exercises the angle that you have your toes on the platform affects which portion of the main part of your calves it targets the most so they call it the gastrocnemius that main part of the calves and the bit that goes all the way down to your angles underneath they call the soleus but that first part the really big part if you like the outer head of it is emphasized more if you point your toes inwards a little bit like braking when you're on your skis like that and then the inner head is emphasized a little bit more if your toes are pointing towards like 11 o'clock and one o'clock out like that like a penguin i guess and all that rambling has given me enough of a break i can drive straight into set two so here we go probably be a bit smoother this time now that i remember my preferred foot position so they don't slip too much like they did in the first set there a bit of slippage Get a few more reps on top I'll show you this from the side for this last set so you can get a better idea of what's going on with the feet on the platform it's pretty straightforward this is an easier one to do than the donkey calves raises machine I can assure you of that Ah. 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 Ah.
Ah, just a quick look. Can resist. They're still there. They haven't completely atrophied from this time off. But walk with me now and we'll head back to where we started for that seated car phrase that we know and love. And this really does target the soleus a little bit more, that bit that runs underneath and all the way down to your ankles. Now, ordinarily I'd lift a lot, a lot more on here, but it's the last exercise and I really don't want to overdo it. It's sort of testing, testing it out with the toe coming back and making sure I don't have further problems and reintroducing calves to my whole routine. So much lighter than usual, it'll be the finishing exercise and that will have been good coverage for calves and uh, very encouraging to me that I think, I think everything's going to be okay. It was very worrying when I destroyed that toe the other week. It was, well, it's over a month ago now, but that was one of the most painful things I've done in recent memory. And set one. There's someone different working at the reception today because they seem to be playing like all like alternative rock and new metal and, and that system of a down a minute ago and all this kind of thing. I'm open to it, but for me it's the it's the true metal all the way. I just need to accept on the walk down. Accept Metal Heart album. The best ones I think are Russian Roulette, Metal Heart, and obviously Balls to the Wall. That true heavy metal sound, I'm hoping to see them at the end of this year, but it's gonna be a be a trip to somewhere in Europe. I don't think they're doing the UK, but I'm prepared to travel for my dose of the real steel. Anyway, if you're not here for metal, I mean, for those of you who are, I'm very glad about that, but most of you are not here for metal. But. I can assure you it goes extremely well with heavy training. Okay, in we go for the last one. Last set of the day. The hardcore calves training day. <laughs> Something like that. And that's it for the day. I'm just seeing what they got on the TV. It looks to be Samson. I met him a couple of times. He's the real deal, for, for sure. I mean, who could be like, you know, the next, like a modern Lee Haney or something? For sure it's Samson. I met him, met him like three or four times now at various things. And uh, he looked excellent at the UK Arnold's. Obviously I didn't film any of that because the finals especially it's all over the internet anyway but he looks amazing like UK Arnold's I think was his best showing ever and it's very promising for the future because I think he's got the makings of being the best in the world well depending on your taste he's like the best in the world already but he was definitely at his best for the UK Arnold's and uh, it, was, it was much much closer especially at finals and pre-judging at the UK Arnold's and uh, I just think, I just think for like stature, structure, muscle shape, and for the conditioning, if you're going by his last showing at the UK one, he's, yeah, he's serious, he's the real deal. When you meet him in real life, he's very impressive as well, because some, some of the guys, when you meet them in real life, it's not the same as the stage look. They're not, they're not like sort of massive overall, because it's all scaled down, because they're a bit shorter, but 
that Samson's uh, is a mountain and uh, I always found him very personable as well so kind of kind of supporting Samson and I'm not sure which video this is it doesn't look like a recent one because I've watched all the recent ones but he's, he's doing a lot of good videos on on YouTube lately so you know if you're less hardcore bodybuilding and just ended up following the me for one reason and you want to see someone who's legit and based in the UK and do stuff on YouTube you gotta you gotta look up Samson Dowder that's spelled D-A-U-D-A -A, and Samson is S-A-M-S-O-N Samson and uh, quite a lot of content there but um, I'm I'm not you know so involved in this that I can't talk about everything so I'd say that one of the advantages of my channel is that I can be a lot more candid about all sorts of crazy things that go on with bodybuilding so that's why you may want to consider subscribing and sticking me, with me for the upcoming videos particularly the ones that I mentioned earlier at the start of this video of what's coming up things that are definitely worth discussing just well for people's safety actually for for a bit of rationality and safety and common sense thinking but also linked in with helping your progress if you're considering all aspects of bodybuilding and what it entails and the more effective ways to go about things the more sensible ways of going about things so that's all coming up but i think for today that was quite a good session i think for reintroducing calves and testing out my toe. That was pretty thorough for a calves workout. And I know I make all these jokes about, you know, training calves and it being boring or whatever, but I actually enjoy it. So that's why I try and show you a couple of exercises you may not have done in the routine for just making it more interesting if you normally shy away from training calves, because done properly, it's, it's sort of the same kind of concentrated pain in a smaller area a bit like a biceps workout you know and don't think that it's not cool having like awesome calves compared to other bits because with calves when it's summer you can wear the shorts and be totally showing off all day without looking like that you're showing off basically just calves and forearms so we think of them as boring but actually you know they're the way forward if you want to look like super muscular without like <laughs> being so blatant and try hard about it like wearing a tight t-shirt or whatever you could just have the calves just sticking out there and summer's coming so not much time left we're we're into spring now and we're well on the way with the bodybuilding season so i did go to that that show down in maidenhead the condition coaches kingdom classic the other day where i i interviewed ross Byrne. I'm looking at going, not this weekend, but the following weekend, this uh, weekend of the 6th and 7th of April, to go and watch the Classic Physique Pro Show. And they've also got all the other divisions, some of them amateur. I think, I think it's just Classic Physique and Bikini for the pro, the pro divisions, and then the, the other, other categories of the amateurs, I believe. But I'll have to check that. That's the Ben Weeder Classic, I think. So... I'm looking at going down to that, so that's also upcoming in the content, whatever I can discuss down there, although they don't let you film inside the actual the actual theatre hall where it's all going on, so it won't be stage footage, but there'll be some unique content coming up of me going down there or discussions with whoever I'm with, whatever I can find really, because I don't want it to be all workouts on the channel, you know, covering everything here, and I know I know it's more action-packed to show the workouts, but then you end up only talking about the training, and the reality is that's that's just one part of it. Part of it, you know, you just like uh, it's like to my mind, there's kind of four pillars of bodybuilding, or the four legs of the table, and they are, you know, like training, nutrition, clean living, and lifestyle, and recovery, and sleep, and all that stuff as a bundle and then like hormones and enhancements and all that stuff as, as number four like those are like the four and they work in synergy there They're like the uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse <laughs> actually like i was thinking about this the other day like which, which would be which of the four like i think like war the four horsemen of the apocalypse like and the four the four parts of bodybuilding like war would be training like 
famine would be nutrition, not contest dieting. Pestilence would be like lifestyle and recovery, because that's just kind of a past and a nuisance. And then death would be the PEDs. Yeah. That's the uh, four horsemen of the bodybuilding apocalypse. And look, I'm going to have to wrap up the video before it gets more and more bizarre. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope. I've made calves video day somewhat entertaining and I'll be back online tomorrow. Cheers.